Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Stepping Up to the Plate. I'm your host, Michael Vega. So glad you could join us. Today, we have a special guest uh, in lieu of my main man, Al Prezzuti, who's away, but so happy to be joined by Bill Resnick here. Thank Bill, you, Mike. For, happy to be here. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Bill, as you can see, this beautiful logo behind me, He's the architect of this thing. So uh, his company, Proforma, here in Milton, did a beautiful job. They do a lovely job with logoing and stuff like that. So, Bill, thank you very much. Thank this you, This is an enduring logo for the ages now, you know? It's uh, standing the test of time. It is. It, it is. really is. And so we, we, we're here to thank you for that and lending some legitimacy to the show, a little bit of professionalism. <laughs> you know, that's what we uh, are all about. And in that vein, I want to clear up a mistake I made last week uh, in giving uh, all the viewers some wrong information about Milton High's schedule. I was uh, mis I mistakenly misread the schedule, showing Taunton uh, was the next game up. But I, uh, on two fronts, I was mistaken. Uh, Taunton game was not last week. It's this week down in Taunton. And last week, uh, unfortunately, the Milton Wildcats went to Walpole where they absorbed a 42-23 to loss against the uh, Timberwolves, they're now known as, uh, down in Walpole, a tough loss for the Wildcats, their first of the season. They're now 5-1 and one on the year, uh, but they still retain the top ranking in the Division Three power rankings that came out. And uh, so Wildcats, you know, still maintaining uh, the, the really, I think the most important thing is they're, is that buy in the uh, in the playoffs? So they're still in play for that. They're number one. They have the toughest, I guess, the best uh, strength of schedule. And so you know, kudos to uh, Coach Dembowski for you know, kind of uh, Steve Steve Dembowski for uh, you know arranging the schedule as such. So now, and I can assuredly tell you that the Wildcats will be down at Taunton on Friday night. Uh, where they'll be playing against the Tigers of the Hockamock League. And, uh, you know, they had an impressive win over North Attleboro the week before. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how the Wildcats bounce back from a loss at Walpole. And, you know, Bill, you got to consider all the success that they've had. That one loss, a blemish in, I think, a really impressive streak of success when you think about it. The only other loss they've had in their 18 games since uh, last year uh, was in the Super Bowl. That's right. Gillette. And, you know, you look at it, they've they've won 16 of their last 18 games. So it was bound to happen. Yeah, it did happen. Hopefully they learn from it. Right. Move on to Taunton. And then I believe not to get ahead of ourselves, but the following week is homecoming. Yes. So it'll be at Milton. Mm -hmm. Big crowd. Yeah. Um, I think they can take care of Taunton. Um, and then come home against Natick, yeah. I, I mean, I know the boys practice really hard at the field, yeah. and uh, Coach Dombowski's got them ship-shape. Yeah. Uh, they're, there's a good probability that they will recover this week. I think so. Yeah. I, I really think so. And, and you know, it's a, a great test because, you know, these are the games that I kind of best simulate uh, playoff Kind of intensity they do you know because you got to get on a bus you got to roll you got to get down there but mm -hmm. you know the thing is that they don't usually see that until you know the semifinals or the actual uh uh well the semifinals because they usually host the first two rounds so. right uh, which is good which is uh good. any idea about the weather for friday i think it might be inclement weather okay. it could be raining down there so you know prepare yourselves for mm -hmm. that uh but if you get down there as always be loud be proud and uh the boys are going to need some support. And, uh, you know, Bill, it's not only just the end. We're reaching the end of the regular season in football. There are other seasons that are starting to gear up now. We're looking at basketball, hockey. You know, I know your son plays on the hockey team. He does. A lot of excitement it's around that. his final year at uh, um, Milton High. Unbelievable. Matthew's the son. I used to watch yeah. him play baseball with my son. No, so. this, it, 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 all the sports, seeing all the sports – the soccer, volleyball, even the cheerleading people. Like I feel like I know every kid. I've yeah. seen every single kid grow up since they've been in kindergarten. Isn't that something See, else? Being that it's my son's class, and now I have a daughter who's a freshman, and yeah. she's playing freshman soccer. Wow. So I find myself at the fields a lot more 
yeah. between the two sports. But hockey, that's my sport. Yeah. So I'm most excited by that. We have a brand new coach. Well, obviously new yes. athletic director, brand new coach. His name's Nick Bly. Yeah. Uh, grew up in Milton, uh, young man, looking, all the kids, the, the kids, they're working hard. Yeah. There are some very talented, skilled athletes, and they're ready to go. Wow. I mean, uh, I am assisting with the team preseason. Uh, it's basically the U18 midgets. Yeah. And the team is a wagon right now. Wow. Uh, undefeated. Uh, granted, competition's a little weak, and the competition is fierce in yeah. hockey. Right. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of skill, a lot of speed. I do think the team's improved just on paper alone. Right. And the new coach should bring in fresh blood. Oh yeah. Fresh perspective. Um, everybody has a clean slate. Um, uh, kudos to Coach Watson for his past tenure, but yeah. I think this was the right move. And I am looking forward to it. And of course, the girls' good. hockey is super strong oh, as well, too. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Uh, good, good, good Lila Shamoon and Ned again for her senior year. And last year, they, they won a couple playoff games, had the largest crowds I've ever seen. For Milton High girls, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Milton has the number one state, the number one girls' program in the state for youth hockey. Wow. Over 150 uh, participants in the program. You go down to Ulan Rink at any time, any of the practices, and you'll see That's fabulous. two, three, six, seven, eight girls on every team. Wow. So girls, girls hockey is growing very fast. Wow. Very exciting for those two sports. Um, I know uh, for the fall season, going back a little bit, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but yeah. the girls soccer program has been revamped. We have a new coach, Kevin Gorham. Yeah. And he's kind of stepped up and established a new program for the girls' team. Yeah. So we have varsity, JV, girls' freshman team. Uh, both are doing all, – all three teams are doing really well. And, and, Bill, I'll tell you something. You know what the – I guess the lifeblood of all – the success of all these programs at the high school level is the success of the youth-level programs. Y yes. You know, when you have participation that you're seeing, not just in girls' – you know, soccer – you know, I, I've been by there where I've seen mm -hmm. like incredible field hockey uh, camps and lacrosse camps going on. And then yeah. you see uh, softball, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a really vibrant, uh, well participated sport. So quite naturally, the extension is that you're going to see the success, you know, kind of gravitate or migrate towards the high school. And time and again, you know, you read accounts of these uh teams that are doing well in high school and it's because that these girls or those players have been together for the longest period of time since youth level yeah and they develop a chemistry a camaraderie that becomes an inseparable bond once they get to the high school level and you know what that only helps build a foundation of success and the smart coach is the one who realizes that and goes and becomes integrated in the youth level. Mm -hmm. Coach Steve Dombowski did that with football here. Yep. And now he's implemented and installed his offense. And it's something that they do at the youth level because by the time they get to mm -hmm. the high school, they already know what's going on. You I'm, know? I'm pretty sure the, I think soccer does a good job yeah. of integrating youth in the high school. Yeah. I hope hockey becomes that way. It wasn't yeah. before, but it, right. it always should be, and it, it should. I think that there's a close relationship now, or they will be at least between the coach and and the uh, president of Milton Youth Hockey. Yeah. Uh, but you, you you mentioned field hockey. Uh, all the all the student athletes look like they're really enjoying their situation. Yeah. I think the sports are they're on the up, and the, some of them are, th are thriving. We right. we have decent. Decent equipment and facilities. Uh, yeah. every, uh, of course, it always could be better. better we, yes. we talk about it all yes. the time, <laughs> all the time. But uh, yes. that, that's getting worked on. Uh, Milton, the Milton Boosters. That's fabulous work that they're doing. Yeah. They're thriving, yeah. uh, and they really add to uh, the coaches' wish lists and values of equipment. Yeah, that you know, and, and propels the kids. Sports. Your company does a great job with kind of designing merch and stuff. Yeah. for the boosters that they sell. You know, at the uh, at many of the games, you can find it. 
so by all means, you know, uh, go by there and, uh, you know, pick up some of your Milton merch out there at the game. So that would be absolutely. Uh, anytime you buy merch, it supports uh, Milton Athletics. Yes, yeah. it's it's all good. They're, they're really uh, creative, great brands, yeah. and people want the merchandise. Oh yeah, um, it's great stuff. I mean, Bill's company does some great stuff. They do uh, hats and all sorts of different things and uh, mm-hmm. garments and and whatnot. So. Uh, Great Christmas gifts, too. That's so. right. We, we, we even actually, uh, I'm not, I probably shouldn't release this, but yeah. we do have some custom Milton pickleball sets coming that you can buy. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, beautiful new corn double, double side. Do no do corn holes. Yeah. I, I have done corn holes, okay. but uh, pickleball sets, we're hoping that there'll be a, a good Christmas gift. Nice. Wish list for go. people. There you go. Yeah. All right, Bill. <laughs> Excellent. But uh, no, I mean, it's a great conversation we're having about, you know, the Milton youth and some of these other teams that are having success right now. And we look forward to getting out there. I want to get out to you and Rink and see Matthew play. And I yeah. know my my neighbor, Steve Sullivan and his boys, you know, they're going to be unbelievable. The this Sully year. boys yeah. are really thriving. They, they've they're they've grown. They're bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah, I've seen um, that. We, we got a lot of promotions that will happen this year. Awesome. Um, so we're, we're really hoping that we'll have more uh, Milton Youth Hockey Nights. Yeah. Uh, we definitely want to pack Eulen Rink, yeah. boys and girls. Yeah. Uh, I think people will be surprised how fast the speed is. Oh, yeah. But very excited about the new promotions and, and giveaways at the rink. And we will sell merchandise at the rink. They have 50 50 raffle. The chuck a puck, we had to increase the number of pucks wow. from last year. Wow. So it's a really good family friendly event. Uh, a lot like the football games, not as big yeah. of a crowd. You're right. But it should be an exciting atmosphere. Excellent. And Excellent. they are going to, so they're playing in Division Two this year. Oh. So we may encounter a few new towns. One may even be Canton, which. Seems oh, wow. to be our arch rival. Yeah. So that's new. We've been playing in Division One, And they're a very strong program. Very right? strong program. Yeah. Uh, with so many ranks in the town of Milton. Yeah. I'm sorry, Canton. Yeah. Uh, both two strong programs. I, I got to give a shout out, too. I know uh, the, the Milton swim team oh, yeah. is 7-1. and one. They, they wow. actually just took their first loss to Wellesley recently. Yeah. Yes. So they're thriving. The girls soccer team thriving. They're, they're going to make the playoffs. That's fabulous. Uh, in fact, game one, they beat Needham one to nothing, the first game of the season, and they have not beaten Needham in 20, 20 plus years. Wow. And the girls' freshman team is still undefeated. And that's the team your, your daughter's and My playing. daughter's on that team. So. I know, I, I feel like the field hockey girls are doing really well. Yeah. Uh, they definitely look like they're enjoying themselves. Yeah, absolutely. The boys' soccer, I think, have struggled a little bit. Right. Their record is not... In a tough conference. Very tough conference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, They had senior night last night. I don't think they... They won, I don't think They won, yeah. Yeah. I don't think they did. I I do not think they persevered, but uh, the boys' soccer in Milton, it's big. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? It's all on the rise. And as we say around here, you know, the high tide raises all ships. Yep. You know, and so when you see the success that a lot of these kids are having at the youth level and they you know, uh, migrate towards the high schools, you know, that success, I think, follows mm-hmm. them. And now, I, I'm not familiar with basketball, with the program, but I yeah. know your daughter played. She did a long time. Uh, basketball, and do you? It, s- it, it, uh, the programs have, you know, for me, I think the, the greatest thing was that it needed an upgrade of the facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, f- they have to re-varnish that court and, and uh, start from there. And I think that's going to be, Maybe uh, uh, something that the new AD Michael Beerworth will will address as yeah. well, you know. But we we're gonna have to extend the invite, and he has accepted earlier. But we haven't had the chance to endeavor to bring him in. But but I appreciate you being here, Bill. It's having this great conversation, to be here. Thank you, know, you Mike. Yeah, it really is. But uh, you know, it's uh, unbelievable now when we're looking at you know not just the local sports scene, but you know in the professional sports scene here with the New England Patriots. You know, you have Milton five and one. The New England Patriots one, one and five. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry to, to, to drag us into this morass of a conversation, but it has to be done, folks. Uh, 
what is it? And, and I get constantly asked this, what are we going to do about the Patriots? You know, oh boy. what are we going to do about the Patriots? And I was of the inclination, and I mean, literally, uh, I was driving back from uh, UMass uh, this weekend, from Parents Weekend, where we went and visited with my wife and I visited with my son, Noel. Uh, and I was listening to Bob Soshi, and, uh, uh, who happens to be a Milton resident and friend of the show. And, uh, you know, uh, Scott Zolak, who we ran into out there uh, during move-in day. <laughs> we ran into Zoe and his family. Uh, but you could hear the exasperation in their voices with this team and the numerous mistakes, the repeated mistakes, the puzzling moves that they've made, mm -hmm. you know, activating Malik Cunningham as a quarterback, but not giving him any snaps during the week of preparation. It's almost like they were setting themselves up for failure. And lately we've been hearing rumors that perhaps this team is in the midst of tanking Tanking so the that they can get word. the number one Ooh. pick next year, which would give them another quarterback or another player. You know, and then there's the, the talk about Belichick. Has he, has he outstayed his welcome? You know, here it is. Yeah. A, a first, he's going to be a Hall of Fame coach. You know, no doubt about his credentials. But there have been questions about his uh, evaluation, his talent evaluation. Uh, the drafts, and this this year I thought they covered themselves in glory with some of the draft picks they made. You know, yes. I mean Christian Gonzalez is the real deal. Keon White's the real deal. This kid Demario Douglas is going to be. They're all going to be good pros. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's the years before that. You know, you had a, a top pick and you go get Cole Strange. Right, that was a real head scratcher. You know, who wh who's going to be the next generation of leaders? Yeah. Uh, you know, you look at the receivers that were available before in Keel Harry, mm -hmm. and you would just like scratch your head. I you believe know. he's not even playing right now. I out think of the he league. Got, yeah, out, out of, of the, the league. league. Just like that. Out of the league. And you know yeah. who was available? DK Metcalf yeah. was available before him. And I was sitting there, I'm going, why aren't they getting DK Metcalf? You Mike, do, do you think, I mean, are you leaning towards this can be solved with a new quarterback? Do you, do you think that, do you think this could be that quick of a turnaround? Or is it, listen, we, we got to blow up the team. Uh, Bill's past his time. You know, there's that talk there, Bill, that, uh, you know, maybe Kraft is, is becoming a little bit frustrated because remember, mm -hmm. at the end of last season, Kraft promised all these changes that they would not be back in that same situation. Yet here they are. Yeah, And today as we speak, the owners are meeting in New York and Kraft is supposed to address this. So it's going to be interesting to see what he has to say about the state of his team now at one and five and where he sees it going moving forward. I would love to hear those comments. Yeah, they're going to be interesting. I mean, maybe his focus was... Uh, the, the new stuff was more about the stadium and yeah, less oh about my the God, team. I couldn't, I couldn't, yeah, he you got know. a little distracted. He's got right. a shiny new lighthouse. Yes, uh, and a, a brand his new brand video new board. video board. And, but I mean, if they show highlights that that show that your team <laughs> stinks, yeah, you know, why would you want that? But you know, I I do believe that uh, they have to seriously consider if they're going to keep Belichick that they have to divorce him from the GM role. Right. That they need to get someone who's a little bit more clear-eyed, who's not going to be a little have a jaundiced view of a certain player or a situation mm -hmm. and not have to worry about how much money he's going to have to spend. Yeah. You know, because no more he kind of hung up. No more missing on these draft picks. You cannot. You, you cannot. You can't in this or, situation. Or, or free agent signings. Mm -hmm. They went out and got Juju Smith-Schuster and paid in the same number that – Jacoby Myers is looking for. Right. Who beat you last Sunday? He sure did. You know, and the ball that was thrown by Jimmy Garoppolo, mm -hmm. right? Who was here at one point? Well, uh, going back to Myers, I mean, wasn't it because of the the, the Las Vegas game last year? Where I he think had that, that again. And then as soon as the, you're out of Bill's sight, you're out of mind in, the, in his head immediately. Well, if you're in his doghouse. You're in the doghouse, forget it. Right. Like, you, you, like, Egregious Written error. off in Bill's But you mind. know what? An egregious error that Jacoby Myers made a year ago. 
okay? Owned it. Owned it. Lived Stood up to it. Stood in front of all the media and owned it and said, I was trying to do too much at that time. You know what? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's acceptable. What's not is Devontae Parker at the end of last week's game trying to explain away how he dropped the ball that was plainly probably one of the best throws that Mac Jones has ever made in his life. Puts it right on the guy's hands, which wound up being a tough spot to put it because the guy, Devontae Parker, who came here ostensibly as a number one, wears the number one, and has n not been anything but a number one. Mm -hmm. He's been anything but that. Uh, drops a ball that was clearly catchable and then claims to say, well, you know, it was on my fingertips. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry. Anybody within radius of that ball has to make that catch. You know, so, and the guy that should have been targeted might have been Kendrick Bourne. Speaking of all those mistakes, what does Bill do? Like, if say, if he stays on, all right, these guys made mistakes that I don't put up with. Are they gone? I mean, what was the the, Their the four out. penalties they yeah, had? Oh my God! To start the game, were the, those the are, stupid penalty on special very, teams yes. that were in fifteen. Okay, that guy not with the team next year, just because. Some of this is communication we, too. It's communication. Yes, it is. They're pre-snap. There are pre-snap mistakes that are being made that are lapses in communication between each other and the sideline and sometimes the coaches themselves. And those that's that's troubling. And to see this repeated game after game after game, and then for them to come back with the same mm -hmm. worn and, and tired excuse of, well, we have to be better. We have to go back and look at the film. We have, you know, it's 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 really a futile exercise or an exercise in futility, mm -hmm. just put it another way, to ask Bill about anything adverse that goes on in a game at the end of the game because he's not going to give you anything. He won't give you any answers. No. That's a little frustrating from a well, fan perspective. Correct. So there's no accountability on his part. There isn't. So, uh, I mean, how much does he own of the season? And when he is – I think that's the next question if they go one and six – Coach, how much accept, how much accountability do you accept for the situation that you're in now? Are we going to get the same answers? Well, we just we gotta got to go, go back to the drawing board. And we gotta, we're on. We're better on. coaching, we're better, <laughs> better we're on to play Cincinnati. calling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. I mean, do you give any fault to having Bill O'Brien? No. Yeah. No. Most people don't. No. I mean, Bill O'Brien was here to fix the problem. Right. And, do, and do you, you know what? By, by, all, by all measures, Bill. At the beginning of the season, I thought that, okay, hey, there's a scheme in place. It looks like Mac Jones is running it pretty efficiently. They were in games against all these teams mm -hmm. that I figured they'd get blown out. But, you know, you look at the end of game against Miami, the end of game against Philadelphia. Those were winnable. Yes. Those were winnable games. It's just that he couldn't finish. The unwinnable games was the one against the Saints. I mean, they got blown out from the, the get-go. The unwinnable game was against the Cowboys. Right. Again, you know, these egregious errors made by the quarterback that caused everyone to question, where, well, is Mac Jones the guy? He can't finish when you put him on the field with a chance to win the game, and then he can't get a, game, a, a team started because he's making mistakes that's costing your defense. And now you're having all these injuries ravage your offensive line and it really don't matter who's going to play quarterback. No, it, it doesn't at this point. Uh, we, we, the starts that we've had have been atrocious. Atrocious. No opening drive touchdowns. Uh, the only thing to tune in for this weekend is to see who's going to be at quarterback. And how long? And, and how long he's going to be in there for? <laughs> no, nobody has faith, or oh, God. I, I don't think there's a lot of strong faith that. They, they're going to come out with a W against the Bills. Yeah. I mean, I remember the old days, the 80s, where you, oh. I loved the lovable underdogs. Oh. And every week, like, I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win. they're laughing stock, man, yeah. you know? I mean, but as much angst as there is in Foxborough right now, their hope springs eternal over at TD Garden, where both the Bruins and the Celtics – I think are going to elevate our spirits, you know, over the course of the winter. Good transition. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's like you look at and and I watched the uh, the uh, exhibition game or preseason game that the Celtics had uh, last night against the the, the Knicks. Mm -hmm. The Knicks didn't play their front line starters, but Joe Mazzulla did. And you know what? It's smart because you got to get these guys integrated. A lot of new pieces in there. You got Kristaps Porzingis. You got Drew Holiday. Mm -hmm. You got. 
Derek White, you know, moving into new roles. You got Peyton Pritchard moving into new roles. And you know what? I like what he did. And he coached that team all the way into the third quarter. He kept his guys all the way into the third quarter. They blew these guys out. And then he brought in the second teamers. And I thought, that's smart because you know what? You're practicing things. Right. You know, he calls a timeout and they're up by like 17. They have a side out of bounds, but he calls a timeout and he treats it like they're not up 17. They're down, they're down mm -hmm. one. And so he's like coaching that situation like they're down one. And I thought, you know what? That's great because you want these guys to understand what they all need to do in that situation. Yeah, you know? and to bring in the second team and get them quality minutes and, and they, work together. And they, he gave them he extended run at, at early in the preseason. But now as they're getting closer to the season, he wants to see his frontline guys get an extended yeah. run. Which is smart. Yeah, take nothing for granted this year. Um, d did we underachieve last year? Uh, in in uh, the playoffs? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they got all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. The Game 7, you know, you got you got tremendous performances from guys like Derek White. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the one, I think. And then, of course, you know, Jason Tatum gets hurt early in that Game 7. That's right. And that, like, totally changed the tenor of that game. And, and Miami smelled blood in the water, and they came after the Celtics at that point. Yep. And, you know, you have a guy like Jimmy Butler who's an absolute killer. Wow. Was but he now a, was we, he have a beast? A, we have an answer. We, we, we have an answer in Drew Holiday. Put Drew Holiday on that guy. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Jimmy, Jimmy Butler goes away, I think. No, I, I did not watch last night's game, but I, I did hear on the radio, I was listening on, to the radio, uh, first half that Tatum had 23. So, they, did Coach Missoula put him in the second half, or was yes. he? Yes, yeah. They oh, played, he did. They so he must have played half. a little bit of the third. And he had then, 28, a very quiet 28. Quiet, because he had <laughs> but 23, he had 28. 24 in the first. Yeah, he had like he had like five out of eight three pointers, yeah. and the whole team hit like 16 in the first half. Uh, they they scored 78 points in the first half. It was unbelievable. And then regular season will begin yeah, first week. week in November. No, I think it's oh. going to be towards the end of okay. the, end Good. Of the month, but. Always uh, enjoy having the Bruins Celtics regular season games going on at the same it time. Is. It's going to be a lot of fun, and of course yeah. the Bruins are now on the West Coast, and we have less than a minute here. Yeah. We we uh, we hope that they get off to a decent start there. Uh, a rousing thing, the centennial celebration was unbelievable there at the Garden. You know, very well done. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I actually take taped it and yeah I go back and watch little bits of segments and see if I missed a little I love is it. it missed a little something I'm always trying to look for which players showed up uh, I really enjoyed seeing Brad Park there I don't know what's going on with Cashman yeah. I think he's um, in the later years of his life yeah, but I he was one of my favorite players growing yeah. up yeah. Was, so was, four game road trip we'll see what happens they open against the Sharks who I'm not off to a good start. Yeah. Um, but we'll see what happens. We will. Out, yeah, we'll see what happens out there. But we want to thank uh, Bill, my main man, for joining us here. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. I wrangled him. <laughs> 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 but we want to thank you for spending your time with us here on Stepping Up to the Plate. We look forward to seeing you here next time. All righty, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Take care.